Hello, I'm Rob Westervelt, Editor-in-Chief of IHS Chemical Week, welcoming you to the 2014 IHS Chemical World Petrochemical Conference. And I'm delighted to be joined by Dmitry Konov, CEO of CBER. Dmitry, thank you for joining us. Good morning. Great. Uh, Dmitry, first question here. Uh, can you give us an assessment of current conditions in Russian petrochemical markets or your outlook for 2014 in key products? Uh, basically, when we look at the Russian petrochemical market, it's driven by domestic fa factors and international factors. Uh, for our major uh, markets where we supply outside Russia, meaning Europe and uh, Southeast Asia, we do see um, not tough but challenging conditions. Uh, we, of course, feel this slight slowdown in, uh, in Chinese growth rates, uh, which has an impact, of course, specifically in the uh, synthetic rubber segment. Uh, as for Europe, uh, Europe has been sluggish for the last several years, so it's nothing, nothing really new. We do see some early signs of improvements, but it's too early probably to make some conclusions. As for the Russian demand itself, uh, we see still very significant growth in, uh, in, in polymers demand, for example. We are still close to double-digit growth numbers for, for major products, uh, which has been a good sign. Although if you look at the Russian uh, macroeconomic performance, it's been worse than uh, most of people expected, including ourselves. The actual growth was uh, slightly above 1% last year, with expectations being 3% or somewhat around, uh, which certainly doesn't help much. Sure. Also, uh, ruble devaluation uh, and ruble has changed maybe 15% versus euro and, and US dollar in the last three months of 2013. That helped uh, in, uh, on, on the cost side specifically improved our margin on the, uh, on the export sales. Uh, can you give us your assessment of the impact of the, the current situation in, with Ukraine, economically and demand-wise? Economically, if you look at, uh, at our breakdown of businesses, uh, we do have significant, as you know, uh, what we call feedstock and energy, where we are net sellers uh, of uh, liquefied petroleum gas, and also another big segment, which is petrochemicals with all the, the products and streams there. Uh, in terms of demand, Ukraine was about 1.5% of our sales, which is not a huge, uh, hu huge difference for us. Uh, we, uh, with all the, you know, with the conditions close to chaotic in Ukraine, I would assess it that way, we still do see them paying and buying the product. Uh, uh, so we don't see significant drop, although it's, uh, it's becoming a bit challenging. On the, uh, on the LPG side, Ukraine is a, is a transit country for us and also transshipping and Ukraine ports is, uh, uh, with the product targeting um, southern Europe and Turkey is, is, is a big part of our business. We haven't seen any interruptions so far with, as I said, all the chaotic developments we see there. Okay. Longer term, how do you see Russian markets developing and what's the opportunity for Seabird to displace the, the current large volume of imports of petrochemicals, particularly polymers? Yeah, we're trying to meet it with, with, our, uh, you know, with our recent projects. Uh, uh, for example, we, uh, we mostly closed the imports, not closed, that's not the right word. We uh, mostly substituted imports of polypropylene by uh, starting up the uh, 500,000 tons capacity in, uh, in Tobolsk. We are also in our joint venture with Solway, we are starting 330 uh, kilotons a year uh, PVC capacity in Kstova, which will substitute most of uh, PVC imported into Russia. Uh, in polystyrene, we did the same with our, with our capacities started in 2012 and 2013, and we, we see the trends going on. In the longer term, we do believe that Russia, in terms of the feedstock available for the petrochemicals, is a still very attractive region. Uh, comparing ourselves with the recent development in the U.S., we, we do believe that we are sometimes more advantageous, depending on location, sometimes at the same level, with the light feedstock cost uh, which U.S. can offer, and that and gives us uh, pretty much of an optimism looking forward. Okay. And given that cost advantage, do you see any potential for exports? Uh, yes, we do. We, uh, when, when we benchmark uh, potential polyolefin projects on the cost curve, we see them being in the first or the second quartile, with all the capacities also being introduced by, by U.S., this new st stream of crackers. So we do believe this that gives us opportunity to monetize the Russian feedstock advantage into products which will be both consumed domestically because the demand is growing pretty fast, as we discussed, and exporting as well. Okay. And you mentioned the investment at Tobols. Can you, uh, can you give us an update on, on how that continues to progress and what other, uh, what else is the focus of your capital investment program? Where else are you investing? Well, basically, if you look at Tobols, Tobols is a kind of dual story. 
it has two sides. Taborsk is a hub where we concentrate our feedstock resources from, mm -hmm. from get oil and gas companies. What, uh, as part of our business is when we purchase uh, byproducts of oil and gas production, we transform them, we fractionate them, and uh, concentrate that in, in Taborsk. On the other hand, what we uh, historically had there and what we're developing further is uh, further processing this uh, available LPG uh, into into petrochemical, into monomers and then petrochemical products. We have uh, uh, butadiene production there, isobutylene production there. We have propane dehydrogenation and polypropylene units. We have MTB and we're further uh, looking forward to develop more downstream projects there in Taborsk to, to capture this uh, advantageous feedstock. Okay. And final question. I mean, you mentioned the, um, uh, the, the key part of the strategy being the, the efforts to improve integration and capitalize on feedstocks with the upstream oil and gas firms in Russia. Um, how is that, uh, you know, what has that meant for SIBA recently and, and, and how will you continue to progress that, that, that strategy of improving integration? Well, if, if we talk about integration, uh, there are re reasonably high concentration of oil and gas players in Russia. Uh, we uh, quite recently signed a new agreement with, uh, with Rosneft, uh, which is one of our important supplies because of the size. Uh, we now had the contracts until 2032. We, uh, we also have very long-term agreements with Gazprom and Novatec, a couple of independent players, both in, in oil and gas. And that actually allows us to look uh, pretty confident into long-term perspective on converting this available feedstock into, uh, into polymer production, other petrochemical production. Dimitri, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much.